For my part, I am staying right here because the speaker that we have coming up next is somebody that I invited and I was so excited when she said, yes, I will come. Lucy Werner has come to us from a company you might have heard of, Google. Anyone ever heard of the Google? Yeah? I think so. All right, Lucy has a, a really, really impressive background in online and traditional advertising from her native South Africa. She has done, practiced in New, she has practiced in London. She has practiced in San Francisco. When the best of the best want the best, they look for Lucy. She's worked with JP Morgan, um, Deloitte, all kinds of great firms, and Google said we have to have her. So she is now their head of sales for finance and fintech partnerships. Please welcome from Google, Lucy Werner. Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, thanks for including us. And the clicker. Does someone have the clicker? The clicker. Oh, here it is. Okay. So we are going to talk about machine learning. So Google's uh, really changed over the past couple of years from shifting our focus from mobile first to AI first. So what I'm going to talk about today is how this applies to your companies and hopefully provide a little bit about uh, inspiration, the finance of the future, and how you can use AI and machine learning. So to get started, we're going to talk about the game of Go. So a couple of weeks ago, Google hosted in Wuhan, China, a Go summit. Who here watched the summit or was aware that we were doing that? OK, so a couple of folks. So let's, uh, let's take a step back and, and talk about what Go is. So Go is a game a little bit like chess. It's incredibly complex. And this provides a fantastic challenge for machine learning and artificial intelligence. So what we did is we designed an algorithm, which we named AlphaGo. And the purpose of this algorithm was to take on some of the world's best Go players in a tournament which we hosted in China a few weeks ago to see if machine learning could actually beat the world's best players. And luckily, we brought together players like Li Sedong, and luckily, AlphaGo uh, won, proving that machine learning and artificial intelligence really can kind of uh, go beyond uh, to win one of the most complicated games. So when we talk about machine learning, what do we mean? So machine learning is really about getting computers to go beyond making decisions based on specific rules. It's getting them to take complex data sets and to be able to think for themselves and independently make decisions. And this is really the future of Google and the future of the way companies are going to interact and engage with their consumers. So what does this mean? What it means is we take tons of data, we build algorithms, and it's almost as if you know, magical results happen. But the process is quite structured. What we do is we collect data, we organize the data, create models, release those models into the wild, and then ultimately deploy the models and kind of take the iterations um, and continue to, to release those into the environment. And if we think about consumers today, consumer interactions have changed substantially. So think about, we wake up, we grab our mobile phones, we do searches, we look for social media. We've got millions and millions of interactions. And those interactions will be about people's personal connections, locations, time of day, age, gender. And all of these data points are incredibly complex. And marketers today have the challenge of not just siloing the data, but understanding that data and how they use that to engage with their consumers. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some real life examples, because ultimately, marketing hasn't changed. Marketing's all about creating personal connections with the right person at the right time to meet them in that moment of need. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples that can hopefully provide some inspiration about how do you provide the right message to your consumers, how do you provide deeper experiences so that they're more engaged with your brand? And ultimately, how do those deeper experiences create loyalty? So in terms of sharpening the focus and providing the right data to the right user at the right time, here's an example to get us started from Expedia. 
So we have three consumers, and all of them are doing the same search. So they are looking for the best rates on hotels. But let's take them one by one. So we have uh, the guy, Alex, on the left, and he's looking for best rates on hotels. But what we know about him is that he's a really loyal consumer of Expedia. And he books a hotel room once a week because he's a consultant. So what we can do is we can provide him best rates on hotels. Lisa in the middle, um, she has actually been to Expedia before, and she's looking for a property in Barcelona. So we can customize an experience for her to say, low-cost hotels in Barcelona. And our last lady on the right, she is brand new to Expedia, so she'll get a generic ad. So that's a quick example of how you can customize based on your specific user experience for each of your consumers. So McDonald's in Japan came to us, and they said, you know, what we do is we have sales data, and we understand all of our stores and all of our consumers and how different products meet consumers at different times of the week, and we want to be able to provide a richer user experience using gender, age, store data, and we want to be able to create thousands of ads on a real-time basis. Is there a way we can take all these different signals, take all of our store data, and create a richer experience? So what we did is we actually helped them create what we term fresh ads. So let's take a look. Banner ads promote products regardless of when or where you see them, right? For example, how can a routine banner promoting a burger get people in bed to react? What if banner ads recommended what people really want at that very moment and place? We found a hint in cash registers. McNow, the live banner generator combining 2 billion McDonald's sales data and everyday life tracking data to create banners live giving you the perfect recommendation for where and when you see them. We aggregated sales data from cash registers across Japan. We also identified which item was the most popular in a particular place, time of day, weather, temperature, or during certain local events. Then we connected the findings to our smartphone tracking data. Banners and landing pages were automatically generated in real time. And customized recommendations appeared real time. Snacks for people who want to take shelter from a sudden rain. Popular takeout menus on a sunny day. Iced coffee for sleepy businessmen on a morning of a hot summer day. Coke for the thirsty girls on the beach. A hot topic hamburger while it's still hot. More than 25,000 types of banners automatically generated. And we recommended specific items best suited for each person. We distributed digital coupons of the recommended items and drove customers directly to the restaurants. Coupon usage rate shot up 150% over the average. Sales also increased, contributing significantly to McDonald's business performance. We make not only fresh burgers, but fresh ads. McNow. So those are a couple of examples of providing you know, relevant content. We're now going to go a layer deeper and talk about how can we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to create richer experiences for customers. So Ocado is a grocery chain based in the UK, and they actually don't have any stores. They have about 500,000 customers who order groceries from them every single week. And typically, if you have an e-commerce business, they'll batch process email, and then they'll sort them and send them to different departments. What Ocado did is they used AI to scan emails. So here's an example of some positive feedback. And then they will tag those automatically and send them to the right department. So this made their customer engagement much faster, more seamless, and more integrated. The next example is, I think, a truly inspirational example. When we think about the most conservative and slow-moving businesses, who is one of the first businesses that comes to mind? The post office. Well, for me, it is anyway. Right? We think about lining up, buying stamps, sending parcels. But the post office in the US came to Google, and they said, how can you help us automate the process of buying a stamp? How can we use people's voices to ultimately make that a richer and better and more seamless experience. So let's take a look about how Google used artificial intelligence to make the post office process a lot more seamless. 
The U.S. Postal Service has been innovating better ways to move mail for centuries. When addresses became too numerous, they invented zip codes. When bad handwriting got worse, they implemented optical character recognition on a massive scale. And now, they are upgrading the antiquated postage stamp with your voice. Working with Postal Service technologists and operations experts, we designed and created a new device to fit on any of the 150,000 existing collection boxes, transforming them into smart blue boxes. Built around AI and self-sufficient with solar panels, they talk, listen, weigh, and transact. And here's how they helped us get rid of the stamp. First, add voice authentication through your existing Postal Service account. Hello, Blue Box. Jason. This voice stamp is now connected to your origin address and your payment method. Next, tell the Smart Blue Box your mail's destination. Hello, Blue Box. Hello, Jason. What can I do for you? I want to send a letter. Okay. What is the destination? 85 Clement Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44024. It will calculate postage and ask you to confirm. Then, just drop it in. Because postal sorting facilities already scan letters for origin and destination to determine postage, this innovation will now connect that data to your account. Your letter is on its way. And the smart blue box gets smarter. It starts with machine learning proprietary postal APIs, and other open APIs. Talk to it in 37 languages. Get pickup times and all sorts of customer services. Most importantly, the voice stamp feature gives you postage without a stamp. When it comes to innovation, the Postal Service continues to deliver. I love that example because I think it's a tangible example of how AI can make our lives easier and better. Another example is on deeper engagement, right? So how do we take our personalization? How do we make it more relevant? But how do we make consumers' lives richer? Because ultimately, that's what's going to build brand loyalty. So I'm going to show you an example from BMW. Is anyone here familiar with CES, the Consumer Electronics Show? So it's held in Vegas at the beginning of every year. So 2017, uh, BMW came to us and they said, we want to use augmented reality. So Google has a number of augmented reality products to bring BMW to life within people's day-to-day -day environments. So imagine you're sitting in a coffee shop and you know, it's post the weekend and you're like, oh, it's Monday morning. Maybe you know, I should shop for a new car. How does BMW integrate their showroom experiences into everyday lives for people? So what we did is we actually uh, we built a Tango app. And BMW, I'm, I'm going to show you how it works. You can basically build a BMW car on the fly in any environment. So this is bringing the BMW showroom into your home, into your driveway. You can pick a model. You can swap out the uh, upholstery inside. You can choose uh, different functionality. Your neighbors will think you're a little bit insane. <laughs> So you can b change out the rims, and this really visualizes, right? So imagine like as a brand, how you can think about the bank or the insurance company of the future and really build loyalty and deep connection with your brand. The last example um, I'm showing you, this one really resonates with me as well. I have a three-year-old daughter, and she loves bedtime stories. So every day I race home from work for you know the milk, bath, bedtime story routine. And as we all know, it gets a little bit dull, right, when you're on book number three and trying to skip the pages. So what we did is we partnered with Disney to try and bring bedtime stories to life. And what we wanted to do is use artificial intelligence to really bring those books to life and provide a richer experience. Let me show you how this works. Later, Belle heard Philippe whinnying outside her window. Where is father, she said to the horse. Did something happen to him? Belle threw on a cloak and leaped onto Philippe's back. Take me to Papa, she commanded. Philippe sped through the forest until he came to the dark and uninviting castle. Belle saw her father's hat lying just inside the gate. She tied Philippe to a post and followed the path up to the castle. Papa, are you here? cried Belle. She slowly pushed open the door of the castle. 
and stepped inside. Lumiere, Cogsworth, Mrs. Potts and Chip quietly followed Belle through the halls. Isn't she lovely, whispered Mrs. Potts. You guys get the general idea. Anyone who has a small kids, I highly recommend you, you check that out. So those are just a couple of examples that hopefully provide a little bit of inspiration. You can see I didn't provide any examples from financial services, and that's because we have a giant gaping hole. We don't have a ton of banks or insurance companies or fintech companies that have done that much in the space with Google as yet on embracing machine learning and artificial intelligence. We think there's a massive opportunity to take big data, to take analytics, to take machine learning, and ultimately to apply that to marketing within our space. So we can really have a sharper focus on the customer, build richer experiences, and ultimately to create brand loyalty. So thanks so much. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And uh, we look forward to starting the conversations. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Lucy. Really excited to have Google here.